All right. Hello, I am Michelle Odirek, a data scientist at the Harvard D.H. Chan School of Public Health, or HSPH. Today, I'll be discussing about reproducible data processing on personally restricted health data. And specifically, I'll talk about the need for a standardized infrastructure um, to achieve reproducible data processing, and we'll describe an approach that is the result of um, collaboration between HSPH and the Faculty of Arts and Sciences Research Computing at Harvard. A uh, big shout out to Michael Boozinier, who not only designed this solution, but he also plays a vital role as its major developer and, and maintainer. Um, so let's get started by understanding our raw data source. In the United States, when individuals reach the age of 65, they become eligible for a federal health insurance program called Medicare. In addition, you might have heard about Medicaid, which is another insurance program that covers individuals with low income. Um, so collectively, as of 2020, one in every five Americans was insured under one of these programs. So let's just pause and consider the volume and significance of this data. We're talking about a comprehensive representative information for all the elder in economically disadvantaged populations in the States. Um, However, accessing and working with the data comes with its own hurdles. For instance, the Center of Medicare and Medicaid Services, who is responsible of managing this data, makes prepare some predefined soft sets that are available for researchers, but only after they uh, enter a data um, agreement, data usage agreement. Still, these prepared soft sets are not yet completely ready for research as they're not harmonized and clean, which leads to a lot of duplicated data processing efforts across the community. And on top of that, because of the same privacy issues, it's not possible to share these data sets across um, groups. Um, so to address all of this, we believe in the need of a standardized open source um, solution that will promote transparency, reproducibility, accelerate the pace of research, and encourage collaborations while still adhering to the privacy uh, limitations. So, oh, we, I think we got to the fun part here. So, um, let's, um, I'll start by describing our take on uh, data processing solution of CMS data. There are two large chunks within our solution. The first would be the cross-year harmonization, and the second one, the research project specific data set generation. Uh, for this talk, I'll mostly focus on the cross-year data harmonization for Medicare, even though the approach for Medicaid would be very similar. And the elements that compose uh, of this as a progress SQL database, Python utility modules, SQL procedures and functions, a common workflow language for the pipeline managing, and a domain specific language. Um, and the main CWL is composed of uh, the sub pipelines that are, I'll walk you through them. Um, so the first is load raw Medicare. So basically we ingest the, the file, the data that's in the files that are provided by CMS. But this, this, this has its uh, complications uh, as we need to parse some files that are called file transfer summaries uh, that were generated by SAS. So automatically we want to generate the schema and this will uh, be then allow us to ingest data into the database. Then we have the Medicare uh, um, YAML files, which ultimately are an abstraction that allows to describe data transformations. And um, so the raw data, what it, the problem with it is that the, we have different file names, different column names, different data types. And what we need is a, um, uh, to describe the data transformations that 
that functionally and in, are independent of a specific data platform. Um, so once uh, all these pipelines are run, we get to this schema. Um, so just to, to close up, will allow us to get uh, some quality checks, visualizations, and uh, hopefully if it's widely adopted, we can achieve a standard approach for CMS data processing.